Good afternoon, my name is Natalie, and my topic is on mental health, and my proposition is that social media affects, um, harms mental health. And my good point is that social media has a negative effect on the way a person views themselves, and cite that social media is a platform to cyberbullying, and that social media allows civility for people to compare themselves socially. And so my first point is that social media has a negative effect on the way a person views themselves. And the first um, evidence comes from Barduli Magazine and other doctors from the Center of Emotional Health. And they say that social media gives the ability of people to compare themselves, like their appearance. And Barduli and other doctors emphasize this by stating that browsing through social media allows people to compare themselves, like how attractive they are, so when they're on Twitter, or Instagram, or just scrolling through your feed, and you see a picture of someone else, you like subconsciously compare yourself to like how they look, and if they're more attractive than you are, or if you're more attractive than them. And um, they also continue to say that um, there was a research um, conducted, and they really don't specify who conducted the research, but there was a research conducted with Australian teens, and they're predominantly Oh God, sorry. Predominantly girls, and they and it reveals that um, when they spend more time on social media, they have a higher chance of um, having more body image concerns. So they're more likely to be more self-conscious and just like just how they view their body image is just like really bad. And they also mentioned that um, oh, pre-adolescents have a higher chance of um, viewing themselves negatively and like comparing themselves more higher, more likely because they. Um, are experiencing a lot of physical and cognitive and social changes, so they're more likely to compare themselves and like see what's more desirable and what's more attractive to other people. And this goes, this gives a legway to my second point to this, um, to my second claim of this point. So like I have a minor claim that's um, life's impact how people view themselves. And this comes from Colhart and Ogden, and they're both professors of psychology, and they did a study that. Um, shows how social media likes rep represent um, approval and like inclusion. So like people basically say that like when they get more likes, they are more likely to feel more included or like more attractive to other people. And um, if they have no likes or they have less lesser likes than other people, they feel rejected or they feel like they're not attractive. And um, they also go to, um, Colhart and Ogden also go to quote research done by Forrest and Wood in 2012. And they state that positive feedback equals higher self-esteem, and then negative feedback or like no feedback at all, which means like no feedback on like a tweet or like on a story or like on a picture on Instagram, um, leads to lower self-esteem. So this basically, all of this evidence basically goes that social media hurts a person's self-esteem. And my second um, point is that social media gives a platform for cyberbullying, and this. Both of my claims, my minor claims, come from O'Reilly Dogra. O'Reilly and Dogra, and then other authors from the um, profess professors of institution at child children health. Yeah, they're like, in like an institution for children and their health. And this was done in 2018. And they had, they do a study where they um, they study adolescents, and they say that adolescents know that cyberbullying is really big on social media, and they recognize this because. Um, so would, when you're on social media, you give like a, kind of like a personal aspect of your life and like how your life is going. And um, adolescents know that this like, basically they say trolls and trolls are um, people who go and say things anonymously. And they're like, it gives a bigger, the adolescents recognize that trolls have a bigger impact on social media because they say a lot of um, purple things because they can't be seen, they can't be recognized because they're anonymous. and. Um, it basically gives them a chance to say things that they won't say in real life. And then they go on, O'Reilly, Dogra, and like other professors go on to say that um, social media gives the ability of content to be shared continuously. And this is like, how does, so this basically legways with like, how does cyberbullying affect more, is more impactful than um, traditional bullying. And this is basically because cyberbullying gives trolls the ability to like, go all, like, online, so like outside of school and like campus, and talk badly about other people and their appearance and like how they act and stuff because of the ability they have to see on social media like their lives. And they also, O'Reilly and Dogra and other authors also recognize that the platform creates um, 
bullying for a longer period of time outside of school. So they have a higher chance of um, invading. So trolls have a higher chance of invading personal life and have a more bigger impact than traditional bullying, which traditional bullying is just like inside school and on campus. And then my last point is that um, social media gives the ability for social comparison. What this means is that people compare how other people are social-wise. So like they compare who's popular and who's not popular. And one of the minor claims comes from Perdue and Madison, who I referenced before, who are both doctors at the Center of Emotional Health. And they say the social comparison theory, which is what um, basically what I said, how people have a drive to um, determine their progress and their social standing on certain like um, events. Based on, so, on certain events that are um, posted on social media, so on Snapchat, if you go and look at a story, and it's like a story of a party, then you're gonna be, then you're gonna be like, oh, like everyone was invited to this party and I wasn't, and so that's just like they're more popular than I am because I'm not invited to the party. And um, there's a second minor claim that says the uh, um, fear of missing out, which is um, FOMO, and that's just basically you don't think that you're a part of anything and you're excluded from everyone else. So in conclusion, social media harms mental health because of the platform it gives to cyberbullying, um, the negative effect it has on a person's view of themselves, and the social comparison it gives you. Thank you. Um, the propositions clearly identified, but you rush through the preview at the beginning of the speech, so we barely get time to know what the main points are. I think we could use a little bit more context at the beginning about why this is an issue, why we're talking about it, and then uh, maybe a little bit more leisurely pace through the preview. Uh, but you do identify the supporting structure. Uh, hey, big surprise, there are three supporting points. Uh, by the way, remember, three is not a magic number. You could have two, you could have four, just it's typical. So. Uh, there's nothing wrong with what you've done here, although there was a little bit of confusion because when you're on that first point, I think you had two or three point number twos, and I think that that's really stuff that's uh, secondary or minor claims under the first point rather than your actual second point. That got a little bit confusing when it was being presented. Um, the best part about the evidence is that you're consistent in citing the sources. You qualify those sources and tell us who they are. Um, the, there's a lot of testimony evidence here. Some of it is based on studies that, are, that have been done. There's not a lot of statistical information in those studies, which is, makes it a little bit problematic. Uh, there are conclusions and inferences being made about uh, you know, how people feel about getting likes or what the long-term impact is of, let's say, um, you know, trolls on people's attitudes or behaviors. None of it is measurable, none of it is any, you know, we don't have any way to make a comparison. I did appreciate the, pa the fact on the second point that you're suggesting that the cyberbullying is distinctive from the kind of bullying that might occur outside of uh, the internet because it's going to be uh, more long-lasting, it's going to be of a different type, um, and there might be some other consequence to it. Although, again, those things are mostly speculative, I didn't really hear uh, any there's not any, any examples, there's not any statistical information here. This is, this is theory by people who are qualified um, researchers who are arriving at these conclusions based on research that they've got, but we don't know very much about the research that they're presenting, and we don't know how significant any of it is. There's, in the long run, I can't tell you that uh, kids are, have a, you know, how do you measure their mental health when you, when you say it, ha it harms their mental health, well, do they have long-term uh, inability to create sound and lasting relationships? Do they become schizophrenic? Uh, do they have less satisfying jobs and careers? Uh, and how do we measure any of those things? We don't really get any information like that. So it's, it's kind of generic in what you're saying. It's not there's nothing bad about what you're arguing. I just, when we ask the question, of, uh, is the proof sufficient? It's, it's, it's easy for me to believe that there's a relationship. It's harder for me to believe that there is something significant or important about that relationship. Do I th 
feel bad for some kid who got bullied online? Of course I do. That's not a good thing. Is it going to harm them mentally in the long run? I don't know that it's going to harm them any more than the usual kind of stupidity, stupidity that kids go through. Uh, if they had to go to middle school, they went through hell already, so we know that they can get through hell again. Uh, you know, I think you do a nice job, although at the beginning you rushed, and at the end, the end you have to rush because you're out of time. You know, so that's a little bit of a problem. Thank you.